qualifier two for the Castle Games qualifiers is a two part workout. Part is going to last for eight minutes altogether. An eight minute ladder at the following barbell complex. Two squat cleans, two hang squat cleans, one front squat and one shoulder to overhead. Weights for individuals starting at 50 kilos for the men, 35 kilos for the women, increasing to a final barbell of 120 for the men and 80 kilos for the women. If you make it to the final bar and there's time left on the clock, treat that as an AMRAP. So if you make it to the final bar and you complete your complex and there's still time left on the clock, go again with the same barbell until the time runs out. If you don't make it to the final bar, treat it as an AMRAP, so the score would be the total amount of reps completed up to that point. After part A, you're going to get two minutes rest, and then part B is a four minute workout. In four minutes, we're going to be assault biking. 45 calories for the men, 35 calories for the women, and in any remaining time, it's max towards the bar. Right, so for the barbell complex, movement standards for this one, first of all for the squat clean, so it's one smooth movement, bar's going to go from the floor and end up at the shoulders. At the top of the rep, we just want to see that you're finishing at full extension, knees and hips, and that your elbows are in front of the bar. At the bottom of the squat, we want to see that the hip crease is passing below the top of the knee. So we'll go for a few reps of the squat clean. So at the bottom of the next movement, plates must touch the ground. Um, you can drop it from the top, it doesn't have to be an unbroken complex, so you could well do the lifts in singles. If you want to touch and go your reps, we want to see that the arms remain straight and there's no bouncing against the ground. Squat, full extension at the top, elbows in front of the bar. What we're not looking for is for a shallow squat, so the hip crease is not going below the top of the knee. Clearly not hitting depth of the squat. And at the top of the movement, a bad rep would be not hitting full extension at the top. So next movement in the complex would be the hang squat clean. Um, for this movement, we want to start the rep from anywhere above the knee with the arms fully extended. So to begin with, we're going to deadlift the bar so that it's above the knee before we start the rep. So standing up to full extension, and now the bar is going to stay above the knee. Same movement standards for the rest of it as the first squat clean, hip crease below the top knee for the squat, full extension at the top. So good reps. Barbell stays above the knee for the start of each rep. So bad rep for the hang squat clean, pretty much again, the exact same movement standards as the first squat clean. Um, we're going to see the squat not going to full depth and the athlete not standing up for extension at the top. extension. So for this specific movement obviously it's a hang squat clean so we need to make sure that the athlete stands the bar up above the knee before the start of the rep so just make sure that after your first two squat cleans you're not going straight into the hang squat clean from the floor in one lift. So you've got to stand the bar up to full extension to begin with now you can start your hand squat cleans. So. Alright, so for the front squat, the athlete's going to have the bar in the front rack position. 
And for this one, all we need to see is that at the bottom of the squat, hip crease is passing below the top of the knee. When the athlete stands up, he's making sure that knees and hips are fully extended. Hip crease below the top of the knee, full extension at the top. The bad rep for this one would be failing to hit depth at the bottom. So clearly, hip crease not passing below the top of the knee and then not standing up fully, failing to hit full extension. So knees and hips fully extended at the top. All right, shoulder to overhead there, last movement of the complex. So remember, one shoulder to overhead to finish it off, and then you'll be increasing your weight and getting started on the next barbell. So our athlete's gonna start with the bar across the front rack again. And all we need to see for this one is that at the start of the movement, the barbell's making contact with the shoulders at the top of the rep. Everything fully extended again. So we've got knees, hips, shoulders, elbows in a straight line, barbells over the center of the body. You've got a choice of movements for this one. So shoulder to overhead, you could choose from shoulder press to begin with. So strict press overhead. Or you could choose from a push press, dick driving press. You could choose from a push jerk. When push jerking, just making sure again that after you've punched under the bar, standing up to full extension to finish the rep. Or split jerk. Landing with one foot in front of the other, feet come back together to finish off the rep. Again, everything finishes at full extension. All right, so we're gonna run through one full complex. Um, so all the movements in sequence. We're gonna begin with two squat cleans from the floor. So two squat cleans. Athlete's gonna then go straight into hand squat cleans, starting from above the knee. Into one front squat into one shoulder to overhead. So the complex doesn't have to be unbroken. The athlete can choose to put the bar down whenever they want to, and then just start from exactly where they're up to. So for example, they could do their front squat, and then choose to drop the bar and take a And when they're ready, they can pick it back up to the front rack position, and finish off with their shoulder to overhead. Last little detail on this one, is that if the athlete chooses to, they can combine those two movements together to make it a thruster. So immediately from the front squat, go straight into the shoulder and overhead. Right, so for part B of qualifier two, the athlete's gonna start on the assault bike. Um, male athletes got to get through 45 calories, female athletes got to get through 35 calories. At the start, you just got to show that the screen is set to zero. So clearly showing that your calories is on zero to begin with. And then the athletes got four minutes to finish that set of calories before they jump onto the toaster bar. At the end of the workout, after the whole thing's finished, you've got to clearly show with your camera that the calories is on at least 45 for the men, 35 for the women. All right, so for the toes to bar, movement standards. Um, to begin with, once the athlete jumps onto the bar, they've got to show that their arms are fully extended. So no matter whether they're starting from a still position or jumping straight into the first rep, they've got to make sure that their arms are at full extension and that their heels pass behind the vertical plane of the bar. At the top of the movement, I'm gonna make sure that both feet hit the bar inside of the hands at the same time. So we'll just do a few good toes to bars. So full extension, heels behind the bottom. At the top of the rep, both feet making contact at the same time inside of the hands. 
All right, so a bad toes to bar at the top of the movement would be their feet not touching, the athlete failing to make physical contact with the bar, and also their feet not touching at the same time. So both feet need to be in contact with the bar at the same time for it to be a good rep. All right, so a bad rep at the bottom of the movement, the athlete failing to get the heels behind the vertical plane of the bar. So when the athlete comes down, not bringing the heels back behind would be a no rep.